It's been in the works for years under the cloak of intersectionality and truth little more than an effort to ink other voting blocks of illegal immigrants, Palestinian supporters, socialists, blacks locked in the ghettos have their minds, sexual outliers, LGBT, and whatever other gender now included, and malcontent women delighted that even post-birth abortion will be legal. The three harpies Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib have stripped the veil from the Democratic tango dancers and presented House Speaker Nancy Pelosi with a dilemma, who to bow to the Congressional Black Caucus without whose votes she would not have her position, or the weak spined moderates and Jewish House members who might mouth objections but still will continue to vote with the party. From the standpoint of her own interests she chose wisely by endorsing an outrageous resolution. I believe in hope that she chose poorly from the standpoint of American voters. Here's the kitchen sink resolution. You won't see Omar mentioned in it. The Democrats instead state a full blown disagreement with hate of every kind from the Japanese internment to Dreyfus and so on. Everything except broccoli and kale. FAR too many reform and conservative congregations are partners in this betrayal. My own former synagogue, which professes love of Israel and Judaism, held a cry in when Trump was elected, and since the election sports banners welcoming refugees, the latest banner reading Love Your Neighbor. Stand against hate, equating an effort to assure immigrants come here legally, have skills we can use, and share our values, with hate. When, in fact, bringing in culturally incompatible immigrants like Omar is bringing in hate. They're not alone. There's the Israel-hating rabbis of J Street, he is, once a religiously supported immigrant aid society which under Obama turned into a cash-rich government railroad that advocates for culturally incompatible immigrants and parks them in poorer conservative communities to alter the voting. At the same time, that he is is filling its coffers, its work further impoverishes the overtaxed welfare, legal, and educational resources of those places. And there's the Jonathan Greenblatt-led ADL, now an even stronger arm of the Democratic Party, which can be counted upon to downplay or shove anti-Semitism under the carpet, though fighting such discrimination was once its very purpose. 